Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to the Legal Forum here only on the Islam Channel with me, Lee Clark. In this series, we've partnered up with Khan Solicitors and we'll be discussing common topics like family law, immigration, landlord and tenant disputes and domestic violence. Now, since its first establishment in 1985, Khan Solicitors have been committed to delivering professional legal advice at the highest standards. A multidisciplinary practice, the firm has grown in both size and reputation from its humble beginnings as a sole partner firm. Now, making a will is often considered as a certain key stages of people's lifetimes. It could be prompted by buying your first home, deciding to get married, having children, a change in your financial circumstances, retirement, a bereavement, and the list goes on. Today I'm pleased to welcome Shahid Deskier Khan, one of the partners and solicitors of the firm who will discuss today's topic, wills and probate. Shahid, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm very well. Um, first and foremost, um, thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, this is a very complex, uh, particular subject in, in a lot of people's minds because some people think that they should have a will, some people think that they don't need a will. Tell us first and foremost what a will is. A will, uh, briefly, is a legal document which takes effect on death. That's the first thing uh, that one should understand about it. It sets out uh, the, the will makers, testators' wishes, uh, how they wish to dispose of their property, and if they wish to appoint a guardian, for example, uh, that can be done. Executors, uh, those are people who would be administering, carrying out the wishes as expressed in the will. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, executors should be appointed, and then you distribute your property. Uh, obviously, it is important that the whole of the property is distributed. That does not necessarily mean that you list all your property. Uh, this, uh, this is done in legal language, but obviously, if there are specific gifts to be made, uh, those should be identified. Uh, for example, I give my uh, diamond uh, collection <laughs> to whoever. Uh, the idea is to, to, to protect your near and dear ones and the ones who you would wish to benefit after your death. Uh, therefore, it is uh, very important. This is uh, one document uh, which, is, which if not done properly or not done at all could have con uh, consequences, unintended consequences. In other words, those who you may not wish to benefit take your property. So if you at this stage, for instance, um, the two scenarios, you've... Um, you've written your will and you've taken care of every asset that you have that is then dedicated to the people that you wish to receive them. If you haven't made a will and you pass away, what happens in that situation with your home, your belongings, your possessions, and how is that then distributed to the family? How does that happen if a will isn't written? If no will was made, then the wife takes her, uh, what is uh, called a statutory leg legacy, mm -hmm. statutory legacy, and that is presently 250,000 pounds. So she takes 250,000 pounds, and whatever is left over is then divided equally between her and the children. No charities, no other specific gifts, if, if, if one had intended to do that but died before uh, carrying out uh, the wishes by uh, writing out a will, then this is what would happen. The question about the will, and we've established then re really by your obviously legal advice at Khan Solicitors that it is so important for somebody to make a will, uh, um, hopefully from the age of 18, uh, and, and if, you, if you feel that you need to leave your assets to somebody um, in your life who's important to you, or a charity as you've said, how do we go about making a will? Do we have to come to somebody like Khan Solicitors? Do we go online? Do we make it on a piece of paper ourselves and go and get it verified by a solicitor? How does one actually start off to make a will? Well, uh, there, there are uh, wills available in the market, templates, etc. But 
uh, I would say one should seek uh, professional advice uh, uh, because uh, the person who, uh, who has the expertise will be able to make sure that all the requirements are fully complied with. For example, uh, when a will is made, uh, executors should be appointed. Uh, previous wills uh, should be, any previous will should be revoked. That's all contained in the legal document. All of the property of the testator, the person making the will, must be disposed. Now that is also a technical thing. You okay. may, uh, I have seen uh, instances, people come, some uh, a client would come and say, look, this is what I have written out, list all the uh, various uh, uh, assets that they have, uh, and I would say, what do you want to do? Uh, well, I want to leave uh, my property to my son and uh, my investments to my wife or whatever uh, else I may have to my children. Now that may change. There's certain legal terminology which a solicitor would use, uh, making sure that the whole of the estate is d disposed of. And for example, I give the res residue of my estate mm -hmm. to whoever A, B, C. Uh, and then if there are certain gifts or certain items, and there's a possibility that uh, uh, the gift may lapse, as we say, yeah. then you say anything that I may not have disposed of through this uh, will shall go to or revert to whoever. A will should be made after seeking legal advice. One other thing which is important, very important, uh, that the person making the will should sign the will in the presence of two witnesses who are both present at the same time as he signs it. Regarding debt, if um, somebody makes out a will, um, passes away, um, but in the, uh, prior to them passing, they've maybe taken out a car loan or a loan for student education on behalf of their family. Um, say there's an outstanding debt of 20,000 pounds from a loan. Um, on their passing, does the debt uh, disappear? Does it become payable by um, the people that have had the money left to them in the will? Ha what happens in that situation? It, it depends. <laughs> it depends, it, right. Uh, uh, it depends. On the, uh, not only the nature of the debt, uh, the, the agreement. Okay. Sometimes an agreement is personal to, to the debtor. So there's a between the uh, creditor and a debtor. The agreement is, for example, this debt is between A and B. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but if, it, uh, but if the debt is worded uh, to include successors in title, uh, if it's property or whatever, then uh, obviously the, uh, it is very clear. But, but uh, a debtor, uh, uh, sorry, a creditor mm -hmm. can uh, go after the estate of a, uh, of, of, of a debtor. Uh, that, uh, that is, uh, that is that would be all right. Does that happen uh, regularly? Yes, uh, uh, but oh. the executors could try and uh, uh, contest okay. or dispute the debt uh, if there's not enough documentation available and if there is not clarity as to the terms uh, of the agreement or was it limited uh, to a period of time mm -hmm. after which the debt would disappear or be written off uh, or is it time barred because uh, a debt must be recovered within six years. Uh, there's a limitation period. Okay. So, so it also depends uh, if uh, how old the, the the age of the debt is also important. Okay. Uh, and, and sometimes what happens is that people die, nothing happens, uh, and after seven or eight years. Uh, uh, the executors, uh, someone appro uh, not someone approaches, the beneficiaries are not bothered, the executors are not bothered, and then after 
seven, eight years, they would say, okay, now let's uh, uh, get probate. Uh, in the meantime, the, the creditors ha have not done anything either. Uh, so, so, so the executors, so, so that's it, statue, uh, uh, any debts would almost, uh, well, definitely become statute. So bar. six years is the time limit? Six, six years in contract, yes. Okay. Do you see the whole will process now in, in, at Khan Solicitors and the people that you deal with, obviously it's your expert subject as well, do you see a lot more people now these days making wills and wanting to make sure that their family are covered and their um, loved ones are looked after in the event of their passing? Is it, is it um, on trend now to say that it's becoming more and more popular for people to think about writing their wills? Yes, uh, very definitely. And uh, more and more people are becoming aware of the advantages of making a will and the need for, uh, to make a will. And uh, there are charities uh, which also encourage, uh, uh, they, they run campaigns. Mm -hmm. What they would do is, uh, for example, if, uh, if Khans are participating uh, uh, solicitors in the scheme run, by a well-known charity or human rights organization. Uh, uh, the, uh, we, we don't charge a fee, but the, they will make a donation to, to various charities. Uh, and this is, uh, this is another uh, concept. Uh, this is a good thing that is developing. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and when people see that the uh, money that they pay small sum uh, is going towards uh, good causes. That itself is an, 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 an incentive to make a will. Uh, so unknowingly, sometimes you, you make a will. You say, oh, right, okay. Uh, I just have to make a small donation. I'll get free legal advice. Uh, and it, uh, there will be peace of mind. That one very important thing is peace of mind. That's the key thing, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, Shahid, what's the difference between conditional, mutual, and joint wills? And are they all still put in common place these days, or is one or all of them uh, more important than the other? Well, uh, joint wills, uh, uh, these are rarely used. Okay. Uh, not very practical. Uh, briefly, it's uh, one will, uh, jointly made, uh, and the will comes into effect on the first death, and then the same will is used uh, on the second death when the uh, survivor dies. Not something which is uh, used uh, uh, often. In fact, as I said, it's uh, very rare. Conditional will is that uh, you you make uh, you set out whatever conditions you wish to put, and upon the happening of that event, uh, your will shall come into effect. The mutual wills, uh, in, in, in uh, lay person's terms, they're called mirror wills, are basically wills that are identical. And uh, normally, a couple, husband and wife, would make uh, a mutual will. Still two separate wills, but uh, they are identical. For example, I appoint uh, my wife uh, as the sole executrix uh, of this my will, etc. I give everything to my wife, uh, and then uh, wife uh, makes a will saying, I, uh, this is, uh, I appoint my husband uh, as the executor, and I give everything to my husband. That is not an excellent example in the sense that uh, you must uh, do more than that because in this case if there's just husband and wife and they leave uh, uh, everything to each other what happens after that so so so, so the, on the second death if there is property that is undisposed of and this is a perfect example where the laws of intestacy will come into play mm -hmm. and then uh, there's a method set out in statute as to how the state will then be distributed. For example, parents, then uh, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, etc. in that order. Do you find um, that uh, contesting wills is happening more and more? And also the other side of the question was, is there a time frame um, for you if you are going to contest a will 
that you're able to do so within the British legal system. Once somebody passes away, you hear the, I, I suppose the phrase is that the, 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 the will is read or the seal is broken on the will. If you're not happy with that will, how long do you have to contest it? Or is there an infinity law on that? There is uh, no time limit, uh, okay. but uh, obviously it would be too late if the will has been uh, executed in the sense uh, the executors have dealt with the assets, and people have disposed them the, off yeah. and it's all gone. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, one wishes to challenge a will, they should register what is called a caveat, mm -hmm. like a caution mm -hmm. at the probate registry. Uh, once the caution is, uh, once a caution is registered there, then what happens is when the executors apply for probate, uh, their application for probate will not proceed okay. until the caveat is removed. And then it's a very complex procedure. Uh, again, there are certain things that need to be done, a notice has to be issued, and then uh, reasons, uh, the, the caveat to the person who has entered the caveat should, should give their reasons, provide evidence why they are challenging the will. So I've got a scenario for you, Shahid. So I ring up Khan solicitors today and I make an appointment to come in and see you because I want to have my will either adjusted or to write a will in the first case. How long does it take for me, or how many meetings do I have to have with you to create my will from the very start of the process? Okay, uh, well, it depends. Uh, uh, what kind of portfolio you have okay. in terms uh, in case, of your possessions, estate, <laughs> and, and your properties and investments. But uh, normally, uh, two meetings mm -hmm. are sufficient. At the first meeting, uh, I would sit down, take instructions, advise, uh, then formulate uh, uh, a, a draft which I send to my client, and uh, via email. Uh, or a post, uh, if any changes are required, uh, those can be dealt with uh, over the phone or whatever, uh, or, or e uh, through an email, uh, and then they just come in. Mm -hmm. uh, I would prepare a fair copy. At the second meeting, they can sign, and it's That's all it done, done, and there will be two independent witnesses. They can sign at the solicitor's offices, as long as the witnesses are independent. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Now, when we've, we've signed it, um, and the, the topic that people always like to be made aware of, if, if possible, is kind of costs of wills, because some people might be in a position where they can afford it, can't afford it, or actually are scared to make a will because they think it might be costing them tens of thousands of pounds or thousands of pounds. Is a will a will, and is the cost implications of getting a will the same every time? I mean, what does it cost on average, would you say? No, no that's, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, wills do not cost much. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I would say a straightforward will could be done within a couple of, within a couple of hundred pounds normally. Okay. Yes, so, so it's not a lot. So that's a lot more reasonable than yes, most people yes. may think. And sometimes even less. Okay. So yes, the average cost could be anything between 150 to 250 pounds. And once they have uh, discussed uh, their situation, their circumstances, and, and their wishes, and uh, it's all written down in, a, uh, in their will, they feel much better. Okay. And uh, also, they are free to change it anytime. That's something which, which uh, some of the, uh, my clients, when they come to see me, they're not too sure, how, how do I change my will? What do I do? Uh, you simply make another will, or you can make, uh, uh, add uh, what we call a codicil, which is a document you add, but codicils are also out of fashion, shall mm -hmm. we say. Uh, you make a... But from an Islamic point of view, yes. um, Touching on that subject and that point of religion, is it important and is it necessary to make a will um, as far as you're concerned? I think uh, the, there is this religious duty as well mm -hmm. to keep your uh, transactions your, uh, uh, in order and also to make sure that uh, the ones who are going to inherit are uh, properly looked after 
and protected. Religion, in fact, uh, is Islamic faith encourages documenting what you intend to do, uh, etc. There, there, there's, uh, in Islam, there, there, there are provisions uh, uh, how, to, how the, uh, the property should be distributed, but that uh, does not apply uh, here, and that is very important. I must point this out that uh, you can make a will saying that uh, uh, this is what I would like to do and it accords uh, with the provisions of uh, inheritance uh, laws uh, uh, in the Islamic faith. But if someone says, uh, I, I wish to make uh, my will uh, in accordance with my faith and full stop, uh, no. Because we operate uh, under the, the UK law, legal that's system. That's right, yeah. bound by the English legal system. And, and in some countries, uh, you can have personal uh, laws uh, that affect you uh, uh, taken into account, you know. But not, not in the UK. Uh, and, and people can, this is something which uh, is important to raise awareness about as well. Therefore, make a will in accord which complies with English law. Well, on that lovely point, uh, Shahid, thank you so much. And what I just want to finish off with is that it's never too early, as far as you're eight, as long as you're 18. It's never too late to make a will. And if you're watching today's show, don't worry about it because you can change the will if you need to at, at any stage uh, after you've made the initial will. Um, Shahid, we've run out of time. I'm sure we've got lots more questions that we could have covered. But for the moment, thank you very much for joining us from Khan Solicitors today. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it. Some important and helpful information on wills and probate. We hope the scenarios discussed on today's show can give you a better understanding on today's topic. And I would like to thank our guests, Shahid from Khan Solicitors, and the partner of Khan Solicitors that we've talked to on the programme today. Please bear in mind the views and opinions expressed in legal forum should be considered for informational purposes only and not case-specific legal advice. All topics are discussed in a generic nature and it's important that you consult with either a CAB, Law Centre or a solicitor before relying on it. If you'd like to find out more about our legal forum or the topic discussed today, then please do email us at legalforum at islamchannel.tv. For now, it's goodbye from me and thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>